Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, one of the biggest challenges in the data center today is secondary data. It is just growing at an incredible pace. Uh, the, it's being stored in a variety of locations, and it, the criticality and the importance of that data is actually increasing. We're using it for more and more things. And, and so managing those three things becomes really critical. Getting our arms around secondary data is of the utmost of importance. Joining me on the board to talk about that is Darren Chapman. Darren is the principal architect at Cohesity. Darren, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, George. I appreciate it. So before we jump in too far, let's talk a little bit about what Cohesity does. What do you guys do as far as uh, secondary data go? Okay, George. So basically, um, as you mentioned, data protection. Uh, from a data protection perspective, a lot of people think of data protection as sort of that black, opaque, sort of tarball, if you will, from a technical perspective, sure. uh, hidden area of the IT environment that no one really has a lot to do with and they mm -hmm. don't really understand what's going on there. Right. So we've exposed that, okay. we've opened that up. So Cohesity focuses on not only backup, which is certainly one of our big use cases, but think of us also as a, as a place for uh, focus on disaster recovery. Okay. Um, big focus area for us is test dev. So okay. for your engineering operations organization. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, there's a lot of analytics focus. And we can certainly be there and, and think about big data. Okay. Uh, you can, we can point a number of different analytics tools okay. to our data set. We have our own proprietary analytics tools built into our UI that okay. allow you to analyze your data set once it lands on the Cohesity cluster. Okay. And then let's, we've got a cloud drawn up here. Let's talk a little bit about cloud. I know that you guys have embraced cloud really early on. What are some mm -hmm. things you're doing there? So from a cloud perspective, initially, um, we partner with the major cloud providers. Okay. So whether you're AWS, Azure, or Google. Okay. Uh, we allow, certainly, replication from on-prem uh, to the cloud itself. Okay. Uh, that could be replication from a mirroring perspective for okay. disaster recovery purposes. Okay. But it could also be for the purpose of archive. Okay, so that tier. way my uh, second my on-prem secondary store doesn't get so big I can't manage it anymore. That's correct. Okay, exactly. Great. Now you also a, a little while back came out with a product called uh, CloudSpin that mm -hmm. works with like test dev stuff. Talk a little bit about that. That's right. So we mentioned earlier uh, te test dev, and so we focused on that area because typically if you think about an IT environment, you think about an engineering organization. Mm -hmm. The traditional request for test dev says, I need to allocate space somewhere in a lab, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's going to take provisioning time. You're going to have to initiate the storage team. Yep. You're going to have to talk to, sometimes you're going to have to talk to the overall IT management. You're going to have to schedule it, right? Yep, sure. So all those things take time yep. and they take effort, et cetera. So what we've done is think about, you know, we have this built-in, uh, very logical, virtual solution for protecting your data, mm -hmm. and think about test dev, we take the data as it's it's being moved here, uh, we integrate whether it's, let's say it's AWS. Okay. Uh, we integrate with the APIs, so the native APIs of your big cloud providers, so okay. AWS, Microsoft, from an Azure perspective. Right. We integrate with those snapshot creation mechanisms okay. so that you can take a virtual machine that's being protected with Cohesity okay. and you can then have a snapshot of that virtual machine mm -hmm. so that we can then take the virtual disk okay. for each of those virtual machines and we can actually utilize that disk. So we have native support for Microsoft and Amazon or AWS okay. so that you can look inside of a, a virtual disk or you can look inside of actual an image or an AMI in the, the Amazon space. So that would really help with uh, test dev type of operations. Certainly. Let, let's talk about this broader issue because I noticed one of the things you have drawn down here is a small office mm -hmm. running a, a virtual ed edition of your product. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I know the big announcement you made at VMworld is this product Helios. It's mm -hmm. really going to help with like managing this globally, sure. right? Sure. So Helios, and you, basically you nailed it. So Helios is a global management solution. Okay. So when you think of Helios, and I'll write it out here to make sure everyone knows exactly what we're referring to. Um, Helios is here to not only manage um, the, the data protection policies, the retention policies, the mm -hmm. scheduling of backups, if you will. Right. Uh, how often you're replicating and so on and so forth. It not only manages a local cluster within... Right an on-prem data center. Mm -hmm. It certainly, it also manages, so we're gonna manage here, we're gonna be able to manage the remote office. Okay. And certainly if you have a cluster or a cloud edition that's living out in the cloud, again, multiple cloud providers, right. we do support Helios is basically globally from one single interface 
Okay. One single pane of glass, we're able to manage multiple clusters, whether they be virtual, physical, or cloud. So Darren, one of the things that really interested me about the uh, release was this concept of machine learning and how you guys are using that uh, to help IT even further. You want to talk a little bit about that? Certainly. That's a great question, George. So one of the areas we're focusing on, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, is machine learning. So when I mentioned, when we're talking about machine learning, we're talking about not only the global management aspect of Helios, right. but we're also referring to the fact that we are doing a very proactive management. Okay, good. So we are actively involved in your virtual machine environment, as an example. Okay. So we are not only involved in your local environment, mm -hmm. uh, so if you have a number of SLAs. So let's say, as an example, you have one SLA that's set to two hours, okay? Mm -hmm. You have a second SLA that's set to six hours, mm -hmm. okay? Um, if, for example, you set these up at separate times, yeah. you might not have prioritized and said, you know, for the purpose of meeting my service level agreement, mm -hmm. this guy should always take precedence over the six hour. Right. Um, you don't necessarily plan those and put them in any specific order sure. in terms of workload. So Helios comes in and says, actually two hours obviously takes precedence over six hours. If for some reason the six hour policy was mm -hmm. set to launch, prior to, yep. it would actually allow the two hour to take precedence. Okay. So it's going to look at every aspect of your policy, of your jobs, and pick out those that should have priority and okay. give those priority without a lot of user intervention. Yeah, I, I tell you, I, I think this is really a critical feature because, you know, one of the things we talked about is just the growth of this secondary data pool. Mm -hmm. uh, the poor IT guy just needs some help, right? Yeah, and so exactly. this, this this sounds to me like it's going to almost be like an intelligent assistant just for the, the secondary data. That's exactly it. And you, one way to think of it, or one way I like to think of it is, is um, think of you're driving your car, mm -hmm. right? And you have your gas gauge and you have all these cool tools right in front of you right. that tell you that, you know, hey, you have 60 miles until you're empty. Right. Um, Helios comes in and actually will predict and will actually let you know that, you know, your growth rates are as follows. Mm -hmm. Your storage reduction rates are as follows. Mm -hmm. Here's how many snaps you have. It basically looks across the board and lets you know that from a planning perspective, you should probably look at adding this capacity or this performance within the next number of days, months, that, weeks, That's huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. Well, uh, Darren, thanks for joining us today. Oh, appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank so, you. so there you have it. As you look at secondary data and all the things that need to, to occur, being able to manage it globally because it could be in multiple locations and really this proactive nature really starts to become critical because you just can't really, a, a human really can't do it anymore. So having some help from the system just makes a lot of sense. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.